Welcome to the Orchestrate All the Things podcast. I'm George Amadiotis and we'll be connecting the dots together. It sounds like a contradiction in terms, but disaster and disruption management is a thing. Disaster and disruption is precisely what ensues when catastrophic natural events occur and unfortunately the trajectory the world is on seems to be exacerbating the issue. In 2021 alone, the US experienced more than 15 weather or climate disaster events with damages exceeding 1 billion. Previously, we have explored various aspects of the ways data science and machine learning intertwine with natural events, from weather prediction to the impact of climate change on extreme phenomena and measuring the impact of disaster relief. AI does, however, is aiming at something different, helping utility and energy companies as well as governments and cities manage the impact of natural disasters, including storms and wildfires. With connected with AI Dash co-founder and CEO Abisek Singh to learn more about its mission and approach, as well as its newly released disaster and disruption management system. I hope you will enjoy the podcast. If you like my work, you can follow Link Data Orchestration on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. I'm Abhishek Singh, co-founder and CEO of AI Dash. Before starting AI Dash, I had started one of the world's first mobile app development company in 2005 and then an education tech company in 2011. After merger of my mobile tech uh, company with a system integrator, which is public listed, I moved to US. And when I moved to US, I realized that power outage is a problem in US too, which was surprising because I was born in a small village in India where having power for 24 hours was a news. But I did see that due to storm, there used to be power outages. And 2017 was a turning point when suddenly the wildfire became big news. So when I was thinking what to do as my next venture, a unique opportunity came where wildfire, storm, etc., were happening a lot and with increasing frequency. And in parallel, satellite as a technology was maturing. 2018 was a point of inflection for satellite technology to be good enough to solve many of these problems. So we jumped into that uh, incorporating AI Dash in January 2019. So that is how AI Dash came into being. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for the uh, introduction. And I was wondering before we um, get any further, and there's a number of uh, topics to discuss. So uh, the uh, the platform that you have been developing and also the uh, latest uh, uh, release, uh, the latest product uh, on this uh, mm-hmm. platform that you're about to announce. I was wondering if you'd like to also share a little bit more about uh, the company itself. So um, the uh, the founding team and uh, uh, where are you based and uh, headcount and, you know, any like general uh, business metrics that uh, you'd like to share. Yep, that's great. So AI Dash start in cause incorporated in January 2019 based out of uh, California. It's a delivery company based out of California. Since 2019, we have been growing very fast. We started with one customer in 2019 to five customers in 2020 and ended with 40 customers in 2021. And these are most of these are in utility space, which is it. And we, are, we have been getting a lot of utility customers uh, so fast, which is unique. Our founders include Rahul Saxena, who is uh, our chief uh, technology officer. He is a senior entrepreneur himself. His previous company was in the fin- it was in fintech space. And my third co-founder is Nitin Das, who is chief AI officer, an end-to-end techie and an AI data scientist. His first foray into AI was way back in 2005. He started something that was even when the AI was not mature at that time, he has been doing AI since then. So this is uh, about our founding team. In terms of metrics, I mean, typically, as a typical Bay Area company, we have been growing pretty fast. Uh, typically, our revenue has increased 5x year on year since we started. So our recurring revenue has increased 5x year on year since we incorporated. Our number of employees has grown several times. I mean, we started with uh, almost five employees in early 2019 and today we have 215 employees with global offices in US, where in US we have office in San Jose, Austin in Texas and Washington DC metro area. Then we have office in London, which we incorporated last year. Then we have office in India. In terms of customers, we have customers in five of the seven continents, including 41 of the 50 US states and three of the, uh, three of the Canada provinces. So extensive set of customers across the globe. And uh, yeah, this is a testament to the fact that the product, the demand is significant across the globe. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, as far as I've been able to tell, uh, just uh, looking up, uh, doing a little bit of uh, background uh, research before uh, the conversation, it looks like um, you're basically developing a platform in, that you are using to first integrate different uh, types of data and then develop um, different, uh, different uh, domain-specific applications, let's say, on top of this platform. So uh, you already mentioned uh, satellite data, but I think you also use other types of data. So uh, I would like to ask you to explain a little bit uh, the, the different sources that you use for your data and uh, how exactly do you integrate all of those? Uh, because as far as I've been able to tell, you also use uh, data coming from uh, sources such as sensors or perhaps even um, data from uh, mobile devices and so on. So. There's different provenance there, and I wonder how you uh, manage all of that. Okay, so our primary source of data is satellite imagery of various kinds. There's multispectral satellite imagery and SAR satellite imagery, which is available today. So we take that into our platform, and we combine that with additional sources of data. For example, weather data, which is very important for us, third party or enterprise data, within an enterprise where the other assets, the location of the assets, for example, which we're monitoring if a storm happens. So those are very important data. Then we get data from, for example, for soil, which actually uh, the predictions are made from satellite imagery itself, but satellite imagery, weather data, and enterprise data are three core data sets which we use. These data go into our AI models. We have various AI models for specific use cases like encroachment model, which detects how far the vegetation is from the conductor, asset health model, tree health model, outage predictions, prediction models, so various AI model, which ingest these data and churn out insights. Where we differentiate from most companies, however, is that we don't just deliver insights because we, have, we found that so delivering insight is not a full solution, which traditional uh, industries like. They want full-fledged, Workflow solution. So we pass on our insight to workflow applications, which includes a mobile application and a web application. And in the mobile application and the web application that we hand over to our customer. Now, this is easy for customer to use because they have an application. They don't care about satellite, right? They care about what to do, when to do, where to do, and how to do. That is what we deliver. The advantage we get it because the mobile application is on the field whatever predictions we are making kind of get validated. So our AI models get reinforced. So they keep improving, which is a significant advantage, which we have being a full stack solution. So this is our total platform. Take satellite imagery, run analytics, deliver those into workflow application, which is handed over to the customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. So uh, I take it that well, uh, you mentioned uh, the fact that you use uh, mobile applications, and I imagine that these are mostly um, used by people who are operating on the field and need to get, for example, notifications for uh, upcoming uh, weather events and other events that may be of interest for them. I presume, however, that, well, this is one uh, class of uh, users, let's say. I presume, however, that you must also have more a more detailed interface uh, for uh, analysts, for example, or even for uh, data scientists, for people who um, want to dig in deeper in how you produce uh, your insights and your predictions um, to be able to validate them or perhaps to go into the uh, reasoning, let's say, that, um, that uh, lies behind those to be able to, uh, to understand better uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. So do you have such an interface and is it, and how, what are the techniques that you use and how are they, are they explainable and to what uh, degree? Okay, interesting. So let me give an example first that will set the context and then I can answer this specific technology question. Let's talk of storm prediction. That's a hot topic today. We are launching the, we have launched the and made the announcement today. So when we are making predictions on the storm, we are taking satellite imagery across the entire network of a power distribution company, for example. We know each and every tree in the network. We know each and every asset in the network. We know their maintenance history from the enterprise data. We know the health of the tree. Now when we supplement that with weather information, real-time storm path, we can make predictions. The first prediction we make is 72 hours before the storm. 
what we tell is that okay, when this storm hits, or the, when the landfall happens, these particular streets in these areas will see these many pole fallings, these many tree fallings, and hence these many damages. To fix this problem, you need these many people on field, you need these many extra people in your call center to handle extra demand. And because there will be flood, we make flood predictions also, these areas may will not be accessible, these areas will be accessible. So you can deploy your crew on time even before the storm has hit and be prepared to, to do that. So yes, the, for the field, field crew, there's the mobile application which goes, but for the planner, the storm planner, whoever is responsible for planning for storm, in you did, there are many such people. They have the web dashboard in which they see real time status of how the storm is going to progress and where they need what. And they can make all those plans. They can send communication to resources on field. They have to also plan for their housing, for, for their accommodation, their food, significant amount of planning which they do. But they have all the information in handy in a single web interface through which they can make those plans. So this is available. Now we don't sell our product to data analyst. We sell our product to end users. It's an end-to-end -end application. So we don't have any interface for data analysts, but for any compliance regulatory point of view for, for explainability. So for example, if a wildfire happens, it happened with a customer, a wildfire happened, happened, the regulators ask the customer whether you are responsible or not. Then from our data models, we were able to submit data with proof that no, the utility did the maintenance in time, so they are not at fault. So those data are available for such compliance and regulatory requirements if required, but we don't expose the data layer to the analysts. We expose only the workflow layer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, that. Um, thanks for the for the insight. And yeah, that's an interesting approach and well, a pragmatic one, I would say. So you are both uh, compliant where you need to be, but uh, you also don't expose uh, much of the uh, inner workings, let's say, of the platform. So let's come to what you're about to announce actually today. So um, a new. Um, a new application, let's call it, uh, called Disaster and Disruption Management uh, System. And as far as I've been able to tell, um, you already have been providing a number of applications. So this is just the latest addition to uh, your product line. So um, I would just like to ask you to say a few words about what it does exactly. And well, also um, a little bit about the uh, pre-existing applications and where uh, does that fill in in your uh, product suite? Okay, perfect. And let me start with pre-existing application because then the technology progression would appear more clear. So the first application which we launched was what we call intelligent vegetation management system. Vegetation management is a big problem in US and globally. US alone spends close to $10 billion every year on vegetation management. And still this investment is not enough, which results in power outages, wildfire, etc. So our vegetation management system monitors power lines, oil and gas pipelines, et cetera, at scale using satellite imagery. So we know what is the clearance between vegetation and the power line today. We have growth rate model which tells how fast the vegetation is growing. So we know how the, what the clearance will be tomorrow. We have tree health model which tells which are unhealthy trees which can fall on power line if there's a wind, so those trees can be removed. So vegetation can be better managed to avoid these wildfire and power outage challenges. This was our first product, which has been deployed at over 50 utility customers. Then we launched our second product, which was sustainability management system at COP26 in Glasgow last year. That is again, looking at monitoring the land assets of utilities and other companies and giving them sustainability metric measurement in terms of what is your carbon sequestration, what is your carbon absorption, what is your biodiversity and how you can meet your, what is a GHG emission and how you can meet these goals in 2030 in terms of reductions targets which you have. That was our second um, product. And it extends the technology from the first product where we were scanning the land at scale and identifying what where are the trees, where are the grasses, etc. So it extends well. And the third product which we are launching, which we launched today, disaster and disruption management system, that extends it further. We know each and every tree in your network. 
we supplement that with real time storm data from various weather data companies which we have partnered with and we get asset data from the customer so we know each and every tree each and every pole each and every location of conductor etc when we map that with weather information we can make predictions for a storm the, the prediction we make is before storm so that utilities can harden their infrastructure and during storm so that they can mitigate and uh, help uh, restore the power much sooner that will result in saving of not only money but also lives and discomfort and post storm assessment of damages for government regulations etc as well as uh, removal and clearance the same system is also used on wildfire here what we do again the tree health model gives us the health of tree so the drying trees for example we also have a model which tells us the moisture content and fuel load of vegetation so for example in california a lot of wildfire is not caused by trees but by dry grasses so we can identify what is the dryness of the grass in the territory for wildfire mitigation we take satellite imagery twice a month once every fortnight map that with real time weather information so we know okay the temperature is increasing the grasses are drying so these are areas where there could be more likelihood of getting having a wildfire if something happens so the utilities and other bodies which are responsible for mit wildfire mitigation can take pre preemptive action to reduce the chances of wildfire so so far the project is focused on storm and wildfire with time we will extend it to other natural calamities like earthquake flood flood to some extent is already included because we do flood mapping during a weather event to measure accessibility but uh, a deeper a deeper product around on around that uh, function deeper functionality around that will come as we progress the the, the product mm -hmm. okay i see um one thing i was wondering about is uh well how exactly do you approach um making uh, these predictions and fitting those models because from the sound of it and also based on um, what I a little admittedly a little I know about uh, the domain uh, however I did have the chance to uh, have an interesting conversation with uh, people uh, who combine well data scientists and meteorology uh, skills uh, in the past and what I've been able to to gather from uh, from that conversation is that they seem to be applying a sort of mixed approach, let's say. So uh, both using uh, machine learning techniques, so using uh, basically uh, lots of uh, data from the past to be able to uh, develop models that uh, should uh, help them predict uh, what's going on, but also injecting uh, lots of uh, specific domain knowledge uh, into the into their models. So, for example, you just mentioned uh, a fact that, well, in California, many wildfires start uh, start from uh, uh, dry grass, for example, not necessarily from from trees. So, this is a type of domain specific knowledge that is very beneficial to have and also to inject into the model. So, I'm wondering if you could share a few words on a high level on how do you approach this this modeling. This is a beautiful question, and this is this is a question which differentiates a product from a technology solution, right? So, I mean, AI is good enough. AI is good, but not good enough until it's deep domain, and domain becomes very important, right? So, when we started the company, we have experts from the utility industry in our company. We already have two certified arborists in our company who understand vegetation. We have a pipeline integrity expert in our company and they have worked with utilities across several years for maintenance and operations activities. So we have these team in-house and their knowledge has been used in building these products. And more importantly, in identifying what variables are more important than other. Like one simple example, right? If there's a storm in a desert, it's not going to cause so much of damage because there are less trees. More than 50% of outages that happen during a storm is because of falling trees. Those them, themselves don't generally fall, except if there's a too, too big a storm and a, and a big tower which is structurally weak, that will fall. But generally, it's the tree which fall on the wire and snap the wire and take out, take off the pole and do all those damages, right? So that gave us a clue that Understanding tree is more important than understanding weather. There are so many weather tech companies. In fact, we partner with them. We don't compete with them. We take their weather data and we believe that their model of weather prediction, which itself also is a complicated model, which works. But then we supplement that with tree knowledge. 
And the second domain information we take is asset maintenance, or transformers, parts, and breaks when there's a lightning and all those things, right? So when was it device maintained? When was it last serviced? That is another domain information which we take in, into our model, right? So these localized domain information is what makes our prediction granular. As I told earlier, we don't make a prediction like, okay, Texas will see this much of damage. We make a prediction that this street in this city will see these many damages. So we're very granular. And granularity comes from deep domain knowledge and the deep domain data, which is ingested into the AI model on top of the satellite and weather data, which is much more broader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. You did mention that uh, the uh, predictions you're able to produce are uh, very fine grained and i was wondering how you're you're able to uh, to achieve that and um, as part of that uh, i was also wondering because you did also mention the fact that you uh, utilize different types of data so primarily uh, satellite imagery but also other data sets uh, historical data local data and so on so I guess that means that uh, the models that you're developing must be multimodal and that sort of, on the one hand, that's kind of uh, state of the art. And I guess it also helps you achieve that uh, granularity that you talked about. Yeah, so if I understood the question correctly, so the models are actually the many models. So just for a storm prediction, uh, for example, at least seven, eight models are being used and for wildfire, uh, we have wildfire probability model, we have wildfire extent model, which tells, okay, if the wildfire happens, how much it will extend. That takes into account the distribution, vegetation distribution pattern, fuel load. So there is underlying model on the fuel load assessment model from pre, okay, when we take satellite picture, uh, we do a 3D elevation model of vegetation from which we compute the volume of vegetation and the fuel load and moisture. So there are many models which actually run together in symphony to make the, these predictions. That is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, I see. Um, I think you must be probably familiar with um, the so-called um, model for uh, for analytics, which uh, describes um, uh, a linear progression in analytics. So starting from mm -hmm. descriptive, so analytics that tell you what the situation is, going to diagnostics, so telling you why a certain outcome did, ca did come about, then predictive, to the analytics that tell you what may happen to prescriptive, to, which is the end, uh, end goal, let's say, so analytics that uh, are supposed to tell you how to achieve certain desired outcomes. On that scale, where would you say uh, your product uh, fits? Yeah, so typical, typical linear progression are not that time varying. So we, so we have this another uh, thing which is called, I mean, my AI scientist will say better about that, but it's called Kalman filter, which uh, has time varying coefficients that gives us much better better prediction in a more time varying fashion, which is relevant uh, to take care of seasonality in predictions. So that is one thing which we use. There are some DNN models which are also used, especially on the image recognition side uh, and identification side from the satellite imagery. So these are the two broad level of kind of kind of model which we are use, using. Then many of these data are time series data, the time series data, where we see spatial temporal change detection as to how, for example, for health of tree, right? Health of tree is a spatial temporal change detection, which we see when monitoring the same tree across several years and seeing how the health is changing, very similar to how we do breast X-ray determination using multiple X-ray imagery. So these are some of the techniques which are used in our models. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And uh, since I guess we're close to, to wrapping up, uh, let's do that uh, by uh, asking you what uh, what is your roadmap uh, going forward? So we just unveiled a new product. Um, uh, what are your uh, goals for the coming period in terms both of product development, uh, but also uh, imagine business development, for example, could, um, could this be of interest uh, besides utilities, which you mentioned is your uh, main uh, are your uh, is your main source of clients uh, to this point could it also be of interest for public authorities for example yeah, yeah. so in terms of uh, I'll take the business first so in terms of business we as of now we are selling to power utilities gas utilities and also energy companies oil and gas companies the, the same technology is very much useful and available for government, cities, municipalities, etc. 
and that is something which is is in our roadmap uh, going uh, going next and in certain cases because there's a significant advantage of data right when we get data from somewhere in a certain region the same data can be used to deliver solution to different entities so for government entities some of these could also be given free of cost because i mean we don't have an incremental cost so that is the direction which we may possibly take especially in a disaster disaster scenario so th- this is how we progress across industries across geographies we have customers in all geographies and we are expanding fast our goal is to get listed uh, around 2025 and we are on accelerated growth path for the same and we will continue to to grow accordingly in terms of product these three lines of product which we have one is the vegetation management which is getting extended into what we are calling distribution asset management system which will work for power line gas pipeline roads railroads etc then sustainability management which solves utility energy water waste water companies construction etc and disaster management which again starting starting from utility will also go into public uh, government and regulatory bodies etc right so these are three products which will expand across different in industries and these are pretty complicated challenges and pretty big market to, to focus on and we are a deep domain company so we will remain vertically focused on these three products which i think is a significantly huge market for us to play for the next few years i hope you enjoyed the podcast if you like my work you can follow link data orchestration on twitter linkedin and facebook